Hey everyone, it's great to have you here. And of course, this is uh, Unity, and we're gonna be talking about today's a very interesting topic, and it's around mood boards. I don't know what a mood board was until recently. <laughs> Sandy is the one who turned me on to it. And it's so important to understand you in mood boards help you get your own personal brand. And we will dive into that. Sandy's doing some, some technical stuff right now to make sure people are joining us. Today's a little more unique. It's different than the way we've done in the past. You could see each other because what we're going to do is we're going to allow you to chime in to ask questions because we want you to be part of what we're doing. So this week we're here, we're taking a week off next week, just so you know. Next week we're off for a week and being off a week um, because you are at a big event in San Diego. I am. And that event is all around the idea of high performance, which I'm going to touch upon also. Now realize that these weekly calls are topics that we feel are important to you. These are things that you should be, be have discuss about what it takes to help you out. Last week we talked about the law, the week before we talked about upgrading yourself, how to have great performance on stage. We hit every single topic, but there are topics you wanna to talk about. Questions that you might have, you gotta send us emails, we're easy to get a hold of. You got Sandy and Focus over here, you got Ken Rakowski over here, and that's how you get a hold of us. So today is about mood boards, but we're not gonna dive into it yet. No, we're not. No, but I'm not. ready. I know you're ready. I know you're ready. Actually, this one didn't go to bed till two in the morning. I was preparing. You're yeah. making this awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so we're creating what's called a format. Yeah. Every single one of these calls, and a format basically is a clock. And I wanted to talk about something before we dive into mood boards, and that is how to make sure your brand is always being talked about. And Sandy did something recently on. LinkedIn, because we're starting to realize that LinkedIn really is the new power social network. Especially if you want to have your videos seen. Hello, everyone hates it when you put your video up and you get like 23, maybe 200 views. LinkedIn, you can get yeah. 2,000 views in just a few short days. I mean, like, and real views, people actually looking and engaging and reaching out to you about your videos. So. Yeah. And also, you have to realize that social media's function is to make sure you're seen, heard, and there's engagement. So and that they make money. Well, you, so when you think of a social media, what's the first thing that comes to mind is Facebook. Facebook is probably the first thing. I want to suggest that Facebook is really family book, friend book. That's the way you should think about it. It is around your community, your friends and family, sharing photos and stories, and realize it's a closed network. Whatever you post inside Facebook is closed. It's not searched by any of the search engines. And this is important. Because it not being searched means whatever you said stays private with inside Facebook unless you lock it, lock it down, and no one else can see it. Where if you look at LinkedIn, that's an open social network. Whatever you post there is shared externally, and on top of it, your profile is scoured. It's searched. It pops out on top. Have you ever noticed that? If you go and search your name with a LinkedIn profile, that comes out on top of a Google search, which means is you control the outcome of your story, of your message. So Sandy sat there and looked at my LinkedIn. Hey, I'm a pro, realizing that it was not a professional look whatsoever. It was bad. Yeah, so you have, of course, some imagery. You have this big banner up top. You have a profile picture. A lot of people do not take advantage of that. No, they don't maximize what they have. It's your billboard. It's your space to advertise. And people actually look at all that stuff and you think, oh, it's not a big deal. I'll just, I don't know what to put in my banner. So I'm just going to put nothing. No, that doesn't work. Put something and make it good. Yeah. Spend some money. If you have to go on Fiverr and spend $5 to have someone create a banner for you because you don't know how to do it, it's worth the investment. So create something that's good. And don't use the same picture. So if your profile pictures are, and then your, brand, your banner picture is the same picture, that's lame. Switch it up. Put something else. Well, again, it's not a good calling card. I want you to think about if someone's going to walk into your house for the very, very first time, what are you going to have them see? Is it going to be messy, chaotic, or do you want it to have a great look that connects with somebody that walks into your house? That's your house. That first big banner picture is the very, very, very first thing they see. And you want it to own them. So make that look at, and of course, profile pictures. This is the top photographer in the world right here. So if it's not looking great, you have, you're going to show off, right? No, I'm showing off what? I'm just. Do you want to show a screen grab? Of which? Of our LinkedIn's real quick. Hmm. Just to give you an example. 
That's right. Good idea, so actually. what we'll do is let's give you an idea of why LinkedIn is so important and how you actually use this as a storytelling environment. So we're going to show our LinkedIn's and you can see what works that Sandy has looked at and maybe some other ones that don't exactly work. So let's do a, a screen grab. Sandy's uh, opening up my LinkedIn. Oh, are we friends? Yeah. I'm actually logged in as you can oh. because I love to comment as Ken. No, I go in there and make his LinkedIn look fancy. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, let's do a, Give me a second here. So all right, I'm going to share my screen. Share your screen and let's look at what, what Sandy's got going here. And there you go. You want to just do desktop and get both over here. This right here. There you go. This one. And share. <gasps> Yay, we're in right. share mode. Hello, everybody. Okay, so to begin, Ken didn't have any of this cool stuff. Actually, he had just a picture up here originally. I wish I had a screenshot of it. I don't know where that is right now. And it was just boring. It was a picture of him talking to someone and it actually looked like his finger was sticking up his nose. It was weird. So we replaced it and we made it really obvious and clear what Ken does. And we used his, his name logo graphic, which is the same on his website, to brand the top, so it's really obvious. We hit the main bullet points of what he does. We also have them here. By the way, you hit the bullet points, if you notice, in that banner. That banner defines what I am, so you don't even have to go down to read what's going on. That was really brilliant. Really brilliant, go ahead. So you can see here is how we did this. And then what we did was we hit the name points again in his title. So you can put whatever you want in your title to make people want to be interested in you. So for Ken, it's very poignant. He's an international speaker. He's a super connector. He's a nexus. We actually explain what a nexus is here. People are like, what is that? Uh, radio personality founder. But if he did something specific, like I help people save lives by providing medical equipment that is really easy to use, write that in there. So you want to make your title really clear so when people see it, Let's see, yours. Let's see yours. Okay. Well, really fast before I get to mine. This is one thing that people always miss in the about section. They don't put anything there or they put it so mm. basic or they sound like they are a resume that's really boring. So you want to make sure you spice up your about. Wow, put in really that. good information about yourself. Make it interesting. Make it eye catching. One million followers on Twitter, 60,000 on Instagram. Like put in content that people go, oh, wow, this person. It's pretty cool. And by the way, remember, this is searched by Google. This is going to come up now. Google, Google loves Twitter. I mean, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Google loves <laughs> LinkedIn. They, they love Twitter, too. They do love Twitter. They do. But look what happened now. Now, that shows up inside a search. You own that. Yes. What else? And then add these clickable links. These links could be links to, like this one, I believe, when I click it, it pulls up the title of his, of his website. And then it has what an excess is, so it's really clear. I can make these actionable and you can make these videos. You can make them links to actual pages. So these are links to other things, right? So make it whatever you want, but make it so it's engaging and interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then if you scroll down here under experiences, this is also another thing that people miss in your experience section. If you're, if you own a business, this is where you say what your business is and then what you do for the business. A lot of people will say what the business is and talk about the business as if it's not their profile. Oh, so like how would they do that? So for example, you are the co-founder and master speaker trainer for Presentation 100. Yes. And here you're talking about how you created Presentation 100 and what you do there. Well, other people would say in their experience, Presentation 100, a place to learn how to speak on stage. Oh no, you're so selling it here too. This isn't where you talk about your business. This is where you talk about what you do for the business. So if you are the founder or the creator, that's where you want to get a little bit more in depth about what you actually do, because then these are clickable links and you can create these very easily in LinkedIn. You click them and it launches what that page is. And look there Ooh, look And you. it launches what it is and it talks more about the business. So I created all of these for Ken to make his, his profile much more robust. Also, try to attach to actual active things. So for example, Ken here was a board member of TEDx SF and he didn't have it linked. No. So it looks really weird. So I went in and reset it to make it so it actually attaches 
to the legitimate TEDx SF, which by the way, they need to work on their profile. They do. So, San Francisco <laughs> needs to work on their own profile. But it happen. looks so much better than having the missing blank spots mm -hmm. here. You want to have this as robust as possible. So let's go and look at mine. And since I'm not logged in as me, we're going to do a search for me. <gasps> look, there I am. Hey. Boom. Are we okay. connected? Here we are. We are connected. Look at this. So for me, I'm a personal branding photographer. I work on people's brands. So for my banner, it's really important for people to see all of the people that I work with. And I have a camera. It always makes me laugh when I get a message from guys going, do you photograph men? Well, right there. exactly. Hello. Yes. But okay. you, you did something different. You didn't put your, uh, in the graphic, you didn't say anything or you're actually just showing imagery. Because when I created this LinkedIn profile, I was highly hyper-focused on me doing the photography. Okay, got it. So I make it really obvious visually because here are people happily smiling. The portraits are all very similar. Well, she's not smiling, but she's still very pleasant. And there I am holding a camera. Now, how often would you change that banner? Because I know you've taken more photos, obviously. Mm -hmm. Will you change that around? I will actually change it around. It's due for a refresh. Okay, how often should we be refreshing these images, do you think? You know, it just depends on your brand. I think things can sit for a while if the messaging is tied down and really clear. Okay. You just want to make sure that things are actually moving on your pages. Show us the video so, that you shot then, too. Oh, Ken, can I endorse you? Oh. I'm going to skip that. I've endorsed him enough. All right, here we go. <laughs> Um, same thing for the about. You can see I have a bunch of videos that I've added. So if you click see more, I don't have mine as robust as Ken's, but it's pretty good. And I have clickable links that you can actually watch my videos. Then if you go back in here in under experiences, I add as much as I can. I talk about what I do and I've made sure that all of the graphics are assigned. Same thing with my education, my licenses. I filled it in as robustly as I could, even my volunteer experience. Huge so traffic sure you do that. is generated because of this everyone. Huge traffic. So you want to realize that this is not a dead spot. This is going to give you movement to whatever you're working on. You don't want to give up on this. So actually we're working with Ava Fang and I just did hers. So she, oh, does, this is great. <laughs> she does my personal branding coordination. So when people want to have photo sessions with me, they go through Ava. No one can actually talk to me anymore to book a photo session. Ava is the woman who's in charge of this. So for her branding, it's very clear in the banner. These are the pictures that I've taken of Ava in the past and we use them and she says, stressed about branding yourself, we've got you. And it talks about exactly what she does, mm. how she does travel. That's her past experience in her side business. She also has a travel curation business. She's a high performance coach. See here, this is the missing floating icon. So this is the one oh. thing that Ava's missing because she's so still working that? on that. Well, she's working on this page. So she is in the process of creating her logo and creating her artwork for this, but this will get filled in soon. But that aside, it's pretty robust in what she did. And we only recently created this LinkedIn profile for her. She didn't have anything. Do you, do you want to try something? How about this? Hey, anyone that's right now in the chat, why don't you tell us, you, if you want, we'll go look at your LinkedIn just for a second to see if anything's got to be fixed up. If you have the courage, we'll look at it real quick. This is not today's topic, but it does go into the direction of branding and mm -hmm. personal branding. Because everything the mood board will show you will move into your LinkedIn. Uh-huh, I know. You're thinking, what? So, <laughs> so Joet, Joet just asked if hiring someone would be the smart thing to do. Okay. Yes and no. There are ways that you can get yourself to that next level of doing things on your own, which we're going to teach today, especially with mood boards. But when it comes to actually doing the graphics, if that's not your wheelhouse and you just aren't really great with computers and tinkering around with the software, yes, hire someone. You can hire someone very affordably. We agreed mutually that, you know, an amateur is a fortune, yeah. right? Professionals are expensive. Amateurs are a fortune. Yeah. So you might so want to pay a little bit more to get someone really qualified to do it, but do your homework and see the quality of the work. And if you love it, hire them. And if you're like, eh, I guess they could do it, pass, go to the next person. All you right. want to try somebody? Do we have a chat? Okay. Let's see. Michelle. Okay. Michelle, can you please send me a link to your, your LinkedIn name? profile? Well, there's her name. There's her name, right? Can we just grab that? Uh, hold on. Let's see. Well, there, there might is. be a bajillion of them. So Hopefully your name is you. pretty unique, but if you can just add a link to your LinkedIn profile into the chat. I'm that would be great. Cut and paste it. Let's see. Let's try this. This is exciting. I love this. We're just going to do it quickly because this, again, is not our topic today, but I wanted to at least jump into something to show you where you can utilize this mood board later on because it will connect. Here we go. Is that her first one, you think? I don't know. Michelle, please add a link because there's a bunch of Michelle 
What do you see your last name? Pallies? There's a bunch. So Pallies, like a castle. Yeah, it looks oh, just like it. my picture that's up on Zoom. All right, boom, there you <laughs> are. Okay, hold right, on. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I just landed. I'm like on my phone trying to <laughs> watch you guys. So I'm just landed. Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm in Denver. Well, Let welcome, you. Denver. Hi, there thank we go. you. Hold on, it's gone. Here we go. Okay. Reminds of a train wreck because I don't know what to do with it. So I'm really. Well, let's take a look at it real quick. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. We're going to go look at yours. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Here we go. And hmm. already I know what the problem is, right? What's the very first thing you see? I talked about it's your house. You walk in, Christmas, you're on the outside. Christmas time is here. Okay, business coach. Yeah, yeah. Personal... Merry Christmas to your top banner. The the winter. Yeah, team. I went from in owner to business coach, so I haven't really shifted everything into my new world. Yes, well, that's it. It's an in. That's exactly right. Okay, so your picture. I like your picture. It's great. It's engaging. I like the little lean in that you've got going on. You look fresh. You look beautiful. I love the picture. That's a winner. That banner has to go. Yeah. Thank you. Has to go. Okay. Let's see. Business coach for growth, personal development, certified high performance coach. Okay, so some of this is redundant. I don't think you need to say your name at the end because it's obvious because you are the certified high performance coach. So you are actually okay. using up too much of the space that you could be using it for something else. All right. It might say something yep. that you're a volunteer for a certain program or another certification of something that goes up there. Oh boy. Oh no. I just saw a bunch of diarrhea of the screen. Oh, ah, oh yes, no. This is the weirdest thing. Okay. So, Isn't this a great example? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> All right, here we I go. I just gave you guys both. Let's start with the top. <laughs> I would work on your title get a little bit more creative and descriptive with exactly what you do, especially since you're a coach. So some people don't quite know what type of business coach you are or what high performance is. So you might want to just get a little bit more detailed there. And then, like I said, chop out this part because you don't need it because it's obvious who you are. Then what okay. I would do, let's see, see more, get more robust on this and see how you're hitting return. I would give a few spaces and fill this in a little bit more. So, um, talk about where you're from, talk about why you're passionate about it, talk about your perfect client, get more information in here as to who you work with and why you love doing what you do. Let's see your link. Is this going to your website? Uh, probably my old website. Yeah. Probably an old, this. I've, okay. Make the, use every single space in your LinkedIn to your benefit. So you, so I have, like Facebook lives I've been doing they're like 15 minutes so I can use those I'm sorry what was that I have some Facebook lives that I've been doing for the past several months they're like 15 minutes long uh, so if I can, can capture those and if you can export those as videos and upload them or post them to a website and upload them then that would okay. be but this image yes. should not be a flower yeah this is okay not, this is not what I would recommend it has no personal connection to anything yeah right so I would add minimum two here, right? One video would be great. And then a link to your coaching website. And if you have two different websites okay. one for business and one for high performance, then have both of those as links. Cause yes, we do have links here. So if I connect with you, I could find your contact information and stuff here. I could, but make <laughs> it more robust. No, How do connected. I connect with you for coaching? Okay. We're, How we're do I learn connected. more? Also okay. experience. So you are, a coach with growth, correct? I know yeah. for a fact growth has their own page. So you could easily connect this to growth's page. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so does high performance coaching. You saw, and there's a typo here. So be really, really careful with typos and break these down into two different things. So business coach at growth, make this go to growth, explain what you do as a business coach at growth. And then the next one, certified high performance coach. And then as you saw in mine, so I'm going to go back to me really quick here, certified high performance coaching, which I'm one as well. Here it is. Look, I link straight to Brendan's coaching Institute. It gives okay. you, it makes you come across as more legitimate. So that's yes. one thing you're going to really want to do. So make sure you make that a little bit more robust. And then okay. if these are your businesses, create profiles oh. for them just so there's not this weird little icon. It's empty. Okay. Yeah, and if you're still doing this, same thing. This needs a profile because right now it goes nowhere. 
I want to mm -hmm. know that there's information about you, make it as robust as possible because here's the thing. And this was our conversation that we had yesterday. Let's go the page. People like to leave out information and not fill in the blanks. Give us as much as we can find about you because it seems like you're paying attention to the details. Let's not skimp on the little tiny details. If you're putting in all the little elements and making it look as full as possible, people think you actually care because if you care about what you're doing, you're going to care about what you're doing for them. Yeah, the details are important because that's what they're hiring you for also is the details that you're going to share with them. If you can't express it on your own website, they're going to be questioning you. So make Love sure this. you utilize that. And I'd like to actually share one more. Let's look quickly at Samantha. She Thank you. She, oh, no problem. Let's see what we got. That's awesome. Let's look at Samantha. Thank you so much. Well, I know Michelle. this girl. This is Sam. This is an amazing person. She actually used to work with me. Uh, at Business Rockstars. Okay, oh, perfect. Yeah, she's so my I'm going to share my screen again. Give me just a second. She is awesome. Oh, that's great. I think she's in Chicago. Let's see. Oh, right here. Right here. Ta -da! All, All right. right. Samantha. Okay, a couple of quick things you notice probably, Samantha, is your very, very top banner. You definitely should have something up there because yep. it's not calling out to anything. And there's probably great imaging and graphics. Because I believe you're in the you're in the entertainment industry now. You're producing. You probably have access to incredible footage and imagery that you should be taking advantage of there. Mm -hmm. there. Great headshot, though. I love your headshot. It's it fun. It's engaging. Friendly. It's warm. It's cropped properly. It looks fabulous. But this banner image is just slaying your page, girl. I mean, it looks like you don't even care. Do you even live on LinkedIn? It feels like you don't. So, oh, you know, it's kind of, I'm kind of funny. It's funny how you ask because it's one of those things that I've been having my to-do list of to-do LinkedIn. And now that we're talking about it, I'm like, you know what, this is like a good thing to like for me to update and like for sure do this weekend. But as Ken said, like I'm working, I'm actually currently at Steiner Studios right now. And I can, I have access to a bunch of like photos yeah, and my book just came all. out. Fix yeah, it. it's just, the problem is when we don't fix up our LinkedIn page, Google loves this. It comes up right away. And it looks like we just don't care. It looks like we're not looking for a job. We're not, and maybe you aren't looking for a job, but that possibility could always come up or side projects. So you want to make sure it's as robust as possible. Everybody is looking for a job when they're not looking for a job. I'm just saying, I hired a professional recruiter for one of my businesses and I go, how are you going to find the person? He goes, I look for the people that are not looking for jobs because they're the perfect people. So when you're not looking is like literally when you should have this up to date looking great. Yeah. So this part, this is looking good, but you can add links yeah, or you can add images. You can add things to this section to make good. it more robust, it looks good. but it looks really good. Experience, if you can attach these to the companies, that would be even better, right? Yeah, and plus they're with valid it. because all the TV shows I can just put and update date it. Yeah, they all have they imagery, all, they have icons. They're all connected somewhere, right? So get them assigned so these aren't, you don't have these little floating spaces. And then volunteer, uh, let's see. This is great. Try to fill out as much as you can. And also I'm gonna give you guys one more awesome little tip on getting a more robust LinkedIn. First of all, if you go in and you like someone's stuff. So like we went here and we went down to Samantha and then we go, let's see, let me endorse Samantha. Hmm, I'm gonna click this one. Yes, I endorsed her, highly skilled and submit. If you do one to three endorsements for people, most people are pretty nice. They come right back. So they're going to endorse you back. Mm -hmm. And when you're in your LinkedIn, you can actually change what gets seen up at the top. So you can move these things around. So if you really want to be endorsed in film, but it's down here, people are only going to endorse the top three generally. Oh, mine, so move them around. Sure. Move them around so people can endorse those and keep rotating them. Also, if you leave people reviews, and say that you know they did a wonderful job working with you, a lot of times they'll do it reciprocally. Or go and ask people, hey, do you mind leaving me a review or leaving me some sort of feedback that would be appreciated? So I have a, a group where we do review drives. We actually say, all right, guys, let's, we need to send each other reviews. So like 20 of us will actually review one another. Just go down and do endorsements real quick. Okay. Just down. I'm down, 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 down. Down, down, down. Endorsements. Ta-da. Okay, so these you move around on a regular basis. Once we fill them up, which they're pretty much filled up. I move yours around, I know but you yours do. all are high and full, so now I stopped moving them because 
It's I'm too so much work. fancy. <laughs> no, 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 I just want to make sure. But look at his recommendations. He's received 73. I have to approve He needs more. to give more. Yeah. I'm not a giver. <laughs> and you can see that he has so many recommendations. So people, when they get to his LinkedIn, they go, wow, this guy's legitimate. Look how many recommendations he has. Look how many connections he has. Look how many things he's got going on. And they want to know more about Ken. He gets so many requests and people contacting him about his LinkedIn profile. So there you make go. sure you use this to your advantage. And I think this is just a sample and an idea. We'll make this a topic in the future, but I wanted you to start this because I, I, I was researching mood boards last night, <laughs> which I did not know there's software around mood boards. Oh, yeah. There's tons of this. It's a big thing. It is a big thing. So let me, let's dive in this. By the way, this is Unity. Of course, this is our weekly call. We're off next week but we'll be back the following week. We are here to help you get to the next level by giving you tools and tips and tricks to help you perform better. We call them elite leadership. That's what it is. How to become an elite leader. And whatever you're doing, you go to the next level. Every week we touch on a topic that we think is important. Last week we did legal. Week before we did sleep. Did you want to sleep? Remember that? Yeah. That was a great one. All of those videos, as long as you go to asktheory.com, register you have access to all the videos and a lot more so you want to make sure you're inside that later on this year we're working on this incredible one week event where we take you away to take your idea out of your head and put it into real motion turn it into a real business you don't want to miss out on that but you got to make sure you're on our mailing list and you're inside our site so go to asktheory.com <laughs> this week is around mood boards now why is this important so when sandy works with anyone on the branding side one of their homework assignments is to create pins they go to pinterest and sandy's going to show this just to start pinning things they like what that turns into is a way that she's able to interpret the inside of that person so she could bring the inside to the outside from colors to formats to everything. Like, he knows it so well because he's watched me do it so many times. Well, I didn't realize how important it is, but it's insanely important. I will actually reschedule someone's photo session if they have not done their Pinterest mood board properly. Yeah. Yeah, I will cancel sessions and I will reschedule them because the mood board allows me to see more about them. So what a lot of photographers do is they say, okay, let's get you in for that photo session. They book it, you show up, they know nothing about you. They take your picture, and you go, that just, that's not me. It just doesn't feel like me. And I don't really, and you don't know why. And they're like, mm, I don't know why I hate my pictures so much. And I've been doing this for years and years. I've been working in photography, graphic design, and web design for two decades. Yes. Wait, are you over 20? I am. I'm slightly over 20. I started when I was like one. Okay. <laughs> but... <laughs> what I, what are the thing is I've seen this time and time again that people don't like their pictures and they don't really understand why. And it all goes back to really understanding your mood board, creating a space for you to show yourself authentically for another person to see it and go, I get you. I know what your style is. I know how to design and yeah. photograph around you because I know what's going on in here. Well, you know, there's an epiphany with people too oh. when they do these. Yeah. But before we go there, I want you to take a quick break, just a quick coffee. Or tea, you got tea? tea today. What do we got? We're doing Paris? I have Paris. It's fancy. It's Harney and Sons. Oh, yeah. I like Paris. A little Paris. Mm. It's like I, a mutual drink session. Everybody drink. Uh, I, I need you all to do us a favor real quick, and that is we normally don't ask you to do anything. I want you to pull out your cameras on your phone, and I'd like you to do a quick Insta story and tag Sandy and Focus and Ken Radio and put us into a story throughout this. So shout out to everybody that we're doing this. Do it on Insta stories, because that's going to be one of our topics in the future is Instagram and TikTok. And we have some very interesting people that are going to be our guests on that. But today, just so you can, you know, thank us is give us an Insta story, okay, on Instagram, okay? That's Sandy and Focus and Ken Radio. So do that. And let's dive into mood boards. Uh, how did you learn about mood boards? How did I learn about mood boards? I think it was when Pinterest came out and someone was talking about it and I was like, oh, that sounds kind of cool and let me organize it. You know, but it really didn't sink in for me until I was doing my own branding. So everything I teach people, I teach them based off of what I've actually done for myself. Mm -hmm. 
and doing a mood board has completely shifted my brand. So for years, I was the cobbler with no shoes or what is the cobbler's daughter has no shoes? I don't know, whatever. I was a cobbler. I had no shoes. So I was working on people's websites. I was taking photographs of them. I was creating looks and brands for them and I didn't have one for myself. Oh, got it. And then I would send people to my website and I would be so embarrassed. I'm like, well, it's not a good representation of my work because I don't really have anything. I haven't had time, which was true. And then I realized I was losing money. I was losing business because I didn't do my own thing. You can't promote something and do something without actually having something for yourself. Right. So I sat down and I took the time to create a look and feel for my brand because I had a photo session for myself scheduled. I had everything ready to go. I had no idea what I was going to do with it. I was completely lost. So I started on Pinterest and I, I had an idea of what I wanted. I wanted a sort of like black and cool, edgy Audrey Hepburn kind of look for my graphics and my brand and the way that I looked. And I pinned a bunch of Audrey stuff, things that just spoke to me where she was wearing the black high neck and the big black hats and the whole like coffee cup and the, the long skinny cigarette and all that stuff. And I, I, t I pinned it all to my board and I created photos that felt very Audrey Hepburn. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Those are the photos that I used for the first few so, years of so my So they did call out to you? They absolutely did. But here's the thing. Most of the stuff that I had selected was black. Black clothing, black hats, black everything. And my branding looked killer. If you saw my LinkedIn profile, that picture with me holding the camera, that came from that Audrey Hepburn shoot. But later as I'm sitting on it, I went, this just, I really don't like only wearing black. My closet was full of black. And I knew that when I dressed in lighter colors, I felt more me, whatever that meant, right? And so I said, you know what? Let me give my brand an overhaul. Okay. So I did it again. I sat down on Pinterest and I said, you know what? Instead of going with my mind of I'm going to be Audrey Hepburn in this photo session, I am going to focus on what I just love. Let me just pin things that speak to me. That's it. So I went through and I'm digging around through Pinterest. I'm like, this is some garbage in here. Let me find something else. And I did a more professional search. So I looked up uh, professional portraits, professional photography. And as I'm looking through them all, I saw some really pretty ones, but I hated what they were wearing or this and that. And all of a sudden I saw an outfit that just spoke to me. I'm like, oh, I love that. Pin. And then I saw another thing. But did you pin. lose the idea of what you were doing and you just kind of lost yourself? Was I just it? allowed me. Lose? Yes, you have to get out of your head of what you think you want. That's a mistake that people make. And just allow your instincts, what speaks to you. Mm. I love this background. I love this artwork. I love this plate. And I'm going to give you guys an example in just a minute. By the way, can I give a shout out? Yeah, go. One of my mentors just joined the call. Oh, hello, mentor. And that's dentist. The call. That's dentist. Dentist. Dennis. Dennis was in New York. Hi, Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Oh yeah, you, wait, Jimmy Dennis. He is amazing. Dennis. Hi, Dennis. <laughs> it's great to have you here. Dennis is one of my mentors. Oh yeah, it's a big deal. All right. Well, we're glad ahead. you're here, Dennis. Yeah. So we're glad all of you are here. So thank you for watching. Yeah. So pin things that speak to you. So when you see them, you just love it and try to pin things that are a little bit more can you show high example? end in terms of the photography. Can you go to Pinterest real quick? Just okay, yes, I'm gonna give you an example. So. Again, hey, every week we're here, asktheory.com is where we want you to go, register why Sandy is doing this. Also, we have a big, big thing we're announcing next week. It's called Presentation 100%, which we're extremely excited about. So it's not about just owning the stage, it's about owning your presence. So that's in the office. If you're an executive and you feel like uh, you're invisible and you want people to hear you, you want to own your life and own your presence, we're going to teach you in a nine-week course how to do this, and it's in-depth. It's, it's, it's pretty serious what we put together. Weekly wins on achieving what your goal is, and that is not just owning the stage, but owning literally your life, the presence of you. So we'll keep you up to date on that, yes. Okay, so here we go. I'm actually, instead of going on to Pinterest, I'm going to show you what I put on my website, making an example of okay, everything. All right, so here we go. So let me share this. Ta-da, okay. So on my episode 18 of my podcast, which if you wanna to listen to this, this is awesome. on sandyandfocus.com. It goes in depth about how to create a mood board. But let me scroll down here. Which by the way is one of your most popular. Yeah, this is actually my, one of my top episodes. This one and the one with Jim Quick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so 
If you go here, this is what I actually created in Pinterest. Now, this was the second mood board I did. The first one felt very Audrey Hepburn. And as you can see, I still pulled some Audrey into this board because I just, I love everything about her. I love her movements. I love the way she dresses, everything. So when I started pinning, I just was looking and I started pinning things that spoke to me. I didn't have any specific colors in mind. I didn't have any specific styles. I just went through Pinterest. And what's great about Pinterest is if you click on, for example, a dress like this, it gives you more options. So if you find something you kind of like, click it, see what additional options there are. But how do you find are. all this stuff on Pinterest? You... I'll show you okay. that in a minute because I'm not technically on Pinterest right now. But I want you to see how this board has evolved. So the magic number for pins is a minimum 50. And I've actually found that 50 is not enough at times. So I say the happy window for Pinterest pins is 100 to 200 pins. Does it take forever to get? No, you could do it in like 20 minutes. Pin, 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 okay? And don't overthink it. Just look at it. If you like it, pin it. If you don't like it, skip it. Look for something better. So as you can see, I really love things that are off the shoulder. So here we go, off the shoulder. I love black hats. I love wearing hats because I wear hats every time I'm in photo sessions. I absolutely so love flowy, blowy dresses. So here you can see flowy, blowy dresses. This is so you right here. There you go, yeah. exactly. I love fitted white dresses for professional look, and I love white on white. So you can see here, tight fitted skirts, white, lots of white. When I started going through the Pinterest, I said, I don't wanna just pin clothes, because that's another mistake a lot of girls do, is they only pin clothes and they get hung up on clothes and poses. Pin other things. So I was going through food photography, because I just love the way it looks. And I, was, I started just completely resonating with ice cream. Even though I love ice cream, and those of you who know me know I love ice cream, that wasn't the point of why I pinned them. I just love the way they looked. I love the color combinations, mm. this little bit of gold and cream, the gray and the, the pink. Mm -hmm. And then I came across plates randomly, and I'm like, oh, I love the way these plates look. So you can see I started pinning more plates, table settings, beach shots. Then here comes the guy with the dog. People go, oh, you're not a guy, and why did you pin that? Well, I absolutely love my dog. And at the time, I had a dog, and I wanted a picture of me just the, the feeling of me embracing her and snuggling her. So it was really important for me to have that in my board because that's what I wanted in part of my brand, me with the dog. Then you have me with the camera. I pinned backgrounds and locations that I love. I love drapey curtains and white on white. And as you can see, I just started pinning things that all felt in unique and things that I just love. I wasn't hung up on the pose, the model, the way that people look. It's what called out to you. I just focused on what called to me. Mm -hmm. Now this is how my mood board finally turned out. So if you go down here, these were the colors that came from the selections that I had made. Because you can see they're very consistent. Here's pink, even though it's a, a monochromatic scale of pink, this fuchsia pinky dusty rose color keeps popping up. Mm -hmm. This bluish kind of color keeps popping up. So does gray, white, and black. So when you see my board, I have variations of that. And you can see how I distilled down from those pins this final inspiration board. Which is you. And this board is what I actually used to select my wardrobe, create my graphics, style my shots. Look what you're wearing right now. It's exactly Even it. brand myself. Yeah, So exactly. you can see it's very consistent. And the end result looked like this. Now who mm. could say, nailed it. You I totally nailed it. Nailed it. So, <laughs> but this came from time and evolution and doing this for myself. So this is so easy for you to do for yourself as well. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say this is so powerful is as a photographer, if someone provides me with something like a Pinterest board, that I can distill down this concentrated mood board, I know exactly what to capture in their shots. Mm -hmm. So let me go here. I'm gonna to go to one new section. Don't so you love having this color pattern for yourself? Don't you love knowing? No, it's easier, isn't it? It makes my wardrobe selection so easy. I go in, I went into my closet after doing all of this and I purged everything. Anything that didn't fit into my color wheel, gone. gone. Like, there's that lime green top that I bought back when that I hung on to because it came from somewhere special and someone, I don't know, I was like, had a memory attached to it, but I never wore it. So if you don't, you have to go through your closet. There are things in your closet that have been sitting there for decades that for some reason you're hung up because somebody gave it to you or you bought it in a, an exotic country or you spent a fortune on it back when and you just can't see yourself giving it away. 
but it doesn't represent your brand and it definitely doesn't match your mood board. I'm Get smiling. I'm smiling because Sandy did this for me, created my, uh, my mood board and then went inside my closet and there was a pile that was the size of a small child of clothes that disappeared. And it was easier to do because I had no emotional connection anymore because it did not work with me. No, I'm serious. I did yeah. steal some of them out of the pile. That you stole it back. Out. No, are you kidding? <laughs> I no. did. It's gone. Where's that pink shirt? <laughs> I like that pink shirt. It's gone. <laughs> All right. So the point is, <laughs> it's so refreshing to go through, create this, <laughs> purge the garbage from your closet, mm -hmm. create a look for yourself, and here's the outcome. When I go to events, people see me in my branding colors and they go, Sandy's wearing her brand. We recognize your brand. When they see my business cards, when they see my website, when they see my LinkedIn, my Instagram, everything, it feels like me. And it, it flows. A it deeper flows. Connection. That's the key. It flows. And guys, you should be doing this also. It's not just for women. You want to have your own personal brand colors. By the way, age. These people that are on the call that are in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, they should be doing the same thing. Absolutely. Age is not an excuse to not have an beard? incredible brand. Have you seen that old guy with the beard who dresses up? Oh, my gosh. The, what is he? The Sense. super sexy Santa? But he's got the flow. He's like Insta Santa? <laughs> Don't remember his hashtag, but That's his awesome. name tag. He's amazing. And he has style, and he has a brand, and it's a unique look, and it looks fabulous. Okay. So I want to quickly show you one more thing. I'm gonna go here and I'm going to share my desktop. Ta-da, okay, so you saw what my mood board looked like. I'm gonna, actually, let me do that. Hold on, stop sharing. Try to share a different page. Ah, there go. I'm going into my Lightroom right now to show how consistent I have been with my imagery and my branding. So this is over, I would say, two years worth of images. And I pulled them and you can see that I'm very consistent with the way that my images look. So for example, if you go in here, the colors, there, there's that shot with the dog that we had mentioned, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. The camera, the black hat, the off the shoulder, all of this stuff is created off of my mood board. The off the shoulder again, the smiling, the white, the blues, the blues, the pinks. You can see that it's very, very consistent. And this is how I show up in life as well. So my thought process shopping isn't, oh my gosh, what am I gonna get? Like, I know exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for these colors. I'm looking for these styles. It makes buying things so much easier and I go so much faster. There's the blowy dresses. There's the pale blue and the grays. So here we go, blowy dresses. I love them. So you can see that I'm in incredibly consistent when it comes to my personal brand. Mm -hmm. So now I'd like to show you Ken, what we did with him. I'm gonna stop sharing this one. <laughs> <laughs> if any, if you have any questions, comments, ideas, please chime in on the chat. We're here to help you out. We're, we're diving into message bar, into mood boards. This is something you need to understand because to help your personal brand out, this is personal brand. This is not corporate brand. Yeah, this is not professionally corporate business stuff. This is for you. Yeah. And you are a representation of your business. All, All right, right. I'm ready. so I'm gonna show this one. What happened? Uh, let's try it again. For some reason, it did not want to show that. So let me close this. Is this maybe it's, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason. There's a reason you don't want to share my stuff. You look so much better than everything. Oh, I like this. <laughs> I do like this. Ooh, this is, like pretty, this. Okay, this is pretty cool. Okay, check this out. All right, here we go. I'm going to do so it again. I did not do this. Okay. I did this for Sandy Ken. did this. As a photographer. You went into this. Let's see, share, sure. and let's share this one. Okay, here we go. So this was Ken's mood board that I created with Ken's assistance. So I started painting. It was dead on. And then I went and created, I had him help me with additional pins. But the point is, you can see here that I was going for a very specific look for Ken. We needed to up-level his brand. We wanted something with a business suit, with a popped collar, with a little bit of edge, with movement. We wanted that face to have a little bit of, I didn't want him to be so sweet and friendly. Because Ken was always like, hi, I'm Ken. I'm super free, sweet and friendly. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to be a little edgier, a little bit harder. So it was Tighter very fitting specific, clothes. More tailored look. Yeah and things that were more fitted to his body and had texture. 
So this is the board that I created. And since I lost 15 pounds, it was a lot better. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you can see, so here you can see where I started adding Ken. I had him pin things that spoke to him. So I would pull up some pins and then he was like, oh, I like that, I like that, I like that. And that's where we got into these colors. So you can see he started pinning and he didn't even realize what he was doing. He was just like, I like that, I like that. And all of these colors started flowing, same with the backdrops and the textures. And then I pinned hairstyles for him because we needed to change that look seriously. Okay. And the end result is. <laughs> now what are you going to do? This. this. Exactly. So here's that edge that we got. So if you go back to this, you can see that these pictures were more edgy looking. Mm -hmm. So we captured an edgy shot of Ken. And actually, I think when this site loads, it looks pretty cool. It goes. <laughs> Sandy's doing those noises, by the way. Okay. That's not from the site. Yeah. And who did our site? That'd be a Sandy Grigsby, by the way. No. What? Abby? Yes. Oh, Abby, Abby, did, Abby did this. Yes. Abby's he great. did a wonderful job. And we want to give him a shout out for that. Okay. So when you scroll down through Ken's site, so these are old stock uh, images. They're not stock images, but they're old images of Ken, which I put in here. But I wanted to point out how we kept to the brand. So there's the fitted suit. And then if you keep going, here we go again. Now we have a more tailored look. We're going to go down here. Hold on. Here is that more graphic, edgy, and you can see from the colors, the red and the orange, we actually pulled this from his Pinterest board right there. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of black, white, red, orange, yellow, and we kept that consistent when we did his branding. And you can see how it came together quite beautifully. And his images. It just flows. Again, fabulous. it flows because we now have a guideline of what that brand is for me. Sandy has the same guideline on her site too. You want to use your Sandy in focus? Uh, yeah, I could do that one. But even here, you can see that all of the graphics, all of the images that we use are in keeping with the look that we had created based off of Ken's Pinterest board. Mm -hmm. Even this edgy shot where he looks like a badass. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's see. Sandy in focus. Let's go to your site real quick. Same thing. There are the images that I use that I gave you the demonstration of. And the messaging, the colors, the brand, it's very, very consistent, even in my podcast. It all flows. See, and there's that Audrey Hepburn shot that I was mentioning. That's what the inspiration was. And when I'm even on stage, I match my brand. So I'm very, very consistent. Here I am again on stage, and these are my colors. So there's Ava. Hi, Ava. <laughs> but we try to keep it as consistent as possible so that I really am clear about what I am. And when you meet me, you connect with me because you feel like you already know me. All right, so here we go. I want to go into one last part. I'm gonna show someone else's board. And it'd be nice if we could just look at Pinterest for a moment then too. Yeah, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna stop sharing this because apparently my computer's acting screwy. Again, everyone, this right here is an example of what we do on a regular basis. Uh, Sandy is one of the top personal branding, everything in the world. I don't wanna say expert because she's beyond that. And uh, she works with the elites. Matter of fact, uh, people like Brendan Burchard and Tony Robbins, those are the people that she works with at that high level. And of course, you too. A professional is expensive, but an amateur is a fortune. You've probably been using amateurs and you have not been satisfied with the outcome. You want a pro always to be working with you. And uh, where are we going now? All right, I'm going to show another mood board. Okay. Uh, this one is Michelle, and I'm going to show how you can add pins to your board. Okay. Michelle, somebody who you recently worked yeah, with? Yeah, I recently worked with Michelle. We just had her photo session, so. And okay. it was incredible, the photo session, the before and after, because what she was and what she is now, it's totally transformed when she did this. She yes. saw a difference in her own look. Okay. She did. Okay, so here we go with her board. You're in Pinterest right now. So this is what Michelle pinned to her Pinterest board. And this is actually Pinterest. So you can see on her board, I had her pin things that spoke to her. And the fun part about what she did was, when she was pinning, we realized that she had a common thread. Which is? Which is this nostalgia, this vintage nostalgia. So her colors were very consistent. The vibration, the hairstyles, the poses, like it's very, very consistent. And what this board turned into, so you can see with all the colors, see how there's like this nostalgia mm -hmm, to it? Mm -hmm. It's just really quite beautiful. Her board turned into this. Oh, wow. 
There's a so, flow, there's a consistent flow about it. There, these were the colors that were the strongest colors that came through on her board. And you can see them show up again and again. And keep in mind, every single image that I've used to put together her actual board, I took from what she sourced on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And what I find is people, when you're pinning from your heart, when you're pinning things that you love, you tend to repeat pin things. Oh, really? It's, it happens duplicate. all the time. So when someone pins things multiple times, I know that they're really in love with that thing. And that's the thing that they want to have represent them. So this is the way that her board came out. So when we did her photo session, we made a point to find a lacy top, pull her hair back like this, do a shot with a popped white collar, make sure that we have the flowy dresses and things that had sort of a vintage inspiration. So I will show you. How long did you think it took her to do something like this? Like 30, 40 minutes. Okay. So, and I will show one more. I'm actually going to show Glenn Jimenez's board because this was really good. All right, Glenn. We'll show Glenn. So you saw mine, you saw Sandy's. And now Glenn, same thing. Uh, recently I uh, came in, him and his wife, they did a photo session. And Glenn, super cool outfits, really edgy. I like the way Glenn looked in those. Matter of fact, I'd rather see Glenn wear that stuff all the time now because it looks so good. Is Glenn okay. on the call or I think he was sick today? Is he? Okay. Let's okay, just see. So. Here we go. I'm going to show this screen right here. So here's, this is again, Glenn, what he pinned, and this is his Pinterest. So these are his pins. So he pinned again, what spoke to him and he loves an edgy look. Like it doesn't mean that he has all of this in his closet. Cause from here is the inspiration to go and source these pieces. He had some edgy pieces, but we found that by mixing and matching things and just tweaking things. So popping a collar on a jacket, we could create an edgier look. And Glenn's very fit. Very fit. And he likes tight clothes because it shows off his, his form. And he gravitated towards these, which by the way, this is what he wears. He wears this type of stuff. Absolutely. But mm -hmm. not everything he owns is as edgy as this. Mm -hmm. But what we found is the tight tops mixed with the blazers and popping the collars and adding simple elements, it was easy to make that adjustment. Mm -hmm. So here we go. We're gonna go down, you can see that he is consistently pinning blues, greens, burgundy colors. It's coming through his board consistently. Even these graphics that he pulled, it's very consistent. The colors are always the same. So now if we look at what his actual board turned out to be. Boom. Ooh, I like this. Right? So look at you can that. see. I pulled these colors. Now people go, oh boy, that seems like a lot of colors. And yeah. I don't want my brand to be and they're all different. They're all very, colors. very different. And they're very different. But keep in mind, it's not that you're going to wear a bright orange top and a bright yellow pair of pants and a green hat. Like that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about elements of these colors. So the green represents the fact that he could have like a very nice dark green shirt with maybe a little bit of yellow detail somewhere, right? Or he could have black on black with a yellow pocket square or a burgundy pocket square, or he could have a like in this shot, a green scarf, and it's more neutral. So this is more like a taupey green, right? Grays, yellow. See, there's like a little pop of yellow. And then he could do a burgundy top or a red belt. So it's accent colors that he can incorporate into his branding to really make it work for him. And this right here is your interpretation of what his Pinterest board was. Of what his Pinterest board was. So exactly. does it take a third party to look at what you've pinned to kind of translate what's been pinned? Not necessarily, because what I like to do is look at the Pinterest board and back away from it. Mm -hmm. So when you do a lot of pins and then you kind of like zoom out and you look at it as a whole, and I know on your iPhone, believe it or not, you can take a screenshot of the whole entire board. So it's hard on Pinterest to sometimes scroll, but you can take a screenshot of the whole entire board and you can see everything. And that makes it really, really easy to go through. Okay. And then you can get an overall assessment of what colors you want to kind of like squint your eyes and see what colors keep showing up for you over and over again. And they tend to be pretty consistent. All right. But again, I, don't go in pinning things going, I'm going to pin red. I'm going to pin pink because I love red and pink. Allow it to speak to you because the end colors might be something that will surprise you. If you have any questions, pop them inside the chat. We have a few more minutes left of this uh, call. Again, go right inside the chat if you have a specific color or question. Let's, let's just move away from this now. Good job. Mm -hmm. Good job, right? You can tell your Actually, passion. I want to show one more, oh, one more example. I have okay. one more to show you guys. And the power of this one is you're going to see before and after one of the ones that I did with my client. Okay. So. You can see that she's passionate about it because she gets it. I love what I do and it's oh, so much yeah. fun. Oh, well, yeah. I know what you're about to do. Yeah. This is a big, this is a radical change. 
Okay, so I'm gonna screen share. It's actually become one of your good friends now. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. There okay. You go. So this is Kaya's board. And as you can see here, she pinned this beautiful kind of, I, I call it blowy, I don't know, <laughs> like the blowing hair and it's just gold and cool colors like gray and there's a little bit of edge to it, but it's a little bit of Burning Man feeling as well. Burning Man, Arizona. And the white on white and it's very ethereal and kind of edgy, but she has a very distinct look. So white is her primary color. So as you can see in her board, I actually have white as one of her main colors, okay? Mm -hmm. So white is the base. All the other colors are accent colors. So she could go into blues, she can go into dark grays, she can have flashes of red, a little green, and this yellow actually represents gold because you can't really make gold. So yellow represents gold. So you can see there's gold, there's green, there's gray, there's white. This color is exactly, this image is exactly what her palette is, right? And it's consistent. So we used this board as the inspiration for her actual photo session, which I will show you right now what that looks like. And that looks like this. Yeah. So this is what her images ended up looking there's like. There's the white, the gold, you can the see. white, the gold, the blowing, which we got as the inspiration the on that board. There's some green that There's a little up. pop of green. Ah, there's the, the green, yellow, yellow. And the gold, right? And she's an author and an international bestseller. So we really wanted to show the warmth that she has. But she also wanted to show some of the fierceness and the seriousness that she has. And then we have a little bit of playfulness down here. And there's the red and the green and the gold and the white and the blue and the gray. And we're very, very consistent in the images that we created for her. Love it. I love it. Any questions? I think there are a ton of them, right? There's a bunch of questions. Just maybe we should chime on those real quick. <laughs> what do you got? So let's see. Okay, what do I use to create the mood board graphic? So yes, I use Photoshop. There are so many different tools you can use. You can use Canva, you can use different apps. I use Photoshop, believe it or not, you can cheat and you can do it right in pages or Word. You just have to grab those images, copy and paste them in there and just kind of align them nicely. It takes a little bit more work. Photoshop, I've created a template so I can just sort of resize things into my template and make it really easy for myself. But yes, I use Photoshop. There, there are, are free apps tools. that you can, yeah, there are apps that you can mm -hmm. use to do this as well. But I, I'm, a, I'm old school, I like Photoshop, I just, <laughs> my wheelhouse <laughs> but hey i use keynote believe it or not i know it's mind-blowing but we use different tools that we're more accustomed to but the goal is this you want to be able to cut and paste and arrange those little squares and rectangles in place to where you can actually see the patterns yeah. that's all you need okay so i want to go back into really fast of why mood boards are important when you understand what your authentic calling is mm -hmm. that means what you're authentically picking subconsciously not what your brain's telling you to do you're going to see a whole new world open up for yourself. And when you use that to tailor the look of your wardrobe, the way that your marketing materials are, your branding, everything, it simplifies the process. No longer do you have to go, oh, is this right? Because instinctually it is right because you're instinctually picking it for yourself. When you allow someone else to do it for you, they're picking based off of what they think is great for you, but that's not you, so it won't speak to you. And I've seen this time and time again. This has been tested with my clients for decades. Okay. I've done this for years and it's been consistent every single time. And I've seen when people let other people design for them, they don't love it. And it goes through many iterations. It's got to come from you. It has to come from you for your personal brand. And when you do this, you feel connected to it. You love it. It feels better. And it's more fun to go out and create a beautiful brand for yourself. And you want to do it. There you go. Any other questions? Are we good? No, everyone says they're excited right. to make the board. I'm so excited to see them. I know, that actually would be great. <laughs> hey, one more thing. Again, do an Insta story of us and make sure you tag this one, Sandy and Focus and Ken Radio. We want people to know that this is happening all the time, okay? All except the time we're doing- Except for next week. <laughs> except for next week. I could, you want me to do it next week? You would be on your own though. I can do it. You want me to? I'm going to be at an event in San Diego going rah, 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 and Instagramming none of it because we're not allowed to. Oh, you're not? You can't? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, maybe, you know, let me see. I'll, maybe I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll have, you can have a nice little break, relax, and I can do something next week. Hey, and the topics that we're going after are the topics that are important to you. So make sure you drop us an 
an email. She's Sandy in Focus. I'm Ken Rakowski. And uh, of course, you know that we're here to help you on a regular basis. I think we did a good job. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everyone, thanks a lot. We want to appreciate the people that have helped us do this on a regular basis. And Ava, you're out there. And Laura, thank you so much for being there. I know they're traveling there somewhere. And we somewhere. can't wait to see your pins. And if you would like to sign up for our Facebook group, it is Beautifully Branded Entrepreneurs. Look for the group. It's a private group, but we will add you because that's where you can share your pins you know and get what? feedback on that. Maybe we should move it to LinkedIn. Yeah, we could do it. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Everyone, thanks a lot for being part of what we're doing. Every time we're here at Unity is here to help you and upgrade you. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.